Hello students, I welcome you in today's session of physics and in physics I am going to present chapter number 28 which is your name as radioactivity. Fine. So before going to start the chapters, let's have a look what we have to study in this chapter. You see the syllabus first. In this chapter we have to discuss about the radioactivity, alpha, beta and gamma, particle rays and their properties, radioactive decay law. Clear? So first we will discuss about what is the radioactivity. You can see here. This is the first topic. So, 1896, Henry Becquerel and uh, observed that the full name is Henry Becquerel. It is written here Becquerel. Observed that uranium and some of its salts emit spontaneous, some invisible radiations which penetrate through opaque substances and affect the photographic plates. These rays are called the radioactive rays or peculiar rays. So the spontaneous emission of rays from a substance is called as radioactivity and such substances are called as the radioactive substances. Clear? Now after the discovery of the radioactivity in uranium, you know very well uranium is in uh, nuclear element. It was found that the besides uranium, other elements like thorium, polonium, actinium, etc., are also source uh, radioactivity properties. So now, in 1898, Perry Curie and Madame Curie, they both are the husband and wife, discovered a new radioactive element which is called radium, and it is about 10 to the power six times more radioactive than uranium. This is the most important property of radium. So they work hard to extract about 2 mg of radium from about 30 tons of pitch blandy which is a kind of coal tar. By chemically separating different elements from it, for this the Curie was honored by the Nobel Prize in 1903. Clear? Now you can see here that uh, second one is the topic nature and the properties of the radioactive radiations. Clear? So uh, see the second one. Here are the figures given A and B. You can easily understood. Rutherford study that the effect of electric and magnetic field on the radioactive radiations emitted by different radioactive substances. So he put a radioactive substance in a thick wall lead box. You can see here. This is the lead box, and we put a radioactive substance in this lead box, and pass the radiation emerging from a narrow opening in the box through an electrostatic held between the two plates. So he observed that the radiation has three types of rays. You can see from this figure, one which deflect toward the negative plate, second which deflect toward the positive plate, and the third which remain undeflected. You can uh, easily understood if you see over these figures. Fine. So these are called the alpha rays, the beta rays, and the gamma rays. Clear, respectively. Alpha, beta, and gamma are actually a stream of the particles. Hence, they are called the alpha and beta particles. Clear. So the alpha particles are positively charged, beta particles are negatively charged and the gamma are the electrically neutral. The gamma rays are electromagnetic waves like X-rays, so they are also called the gamma photons. So it was also observed that beta particles are diffracted much more compared to the alpha particles. This shows that beta particles are very light compared to the alpha particles. Clear? Now the same conclusion was drawn by passing the radioactive rays through the magnetic field perpendicular to their path. So the magnetic field in figure uh, 1b you can see that is perpendicular to the plane of the paper directed inwards in this field alpha particle are deflected to the left of the beta particle to the right and move on circular paths whereas gamma rays continue moving on the initial path. So this thus it is con confirmed by the Fleming left hand rule that the alpha particle are positively charged and beta particles are the negatively charged. So you can say here, no radioactive substances emit both alpha and beta particles simultaneously. Some substances emit alpha particle and some other emit beta particles. Gamma rays are emitted along with both alpha and beta particles. Clear? Now here you can see, uh, we have to discuss about the properties of the alpha particles. So an alpha particle has a positive charge of how much? 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb which is just double the negative charge of an electron. You know very well what is the charge of an electron? That is equals to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb is the charge of an electron. So this charge is double over the charge of an electron. And mass is how much? 6.645 into 20 to the power minus 27 kg which is equal to the mass of the helium nucleus. Helium nucleus means 2 He. E4. This is the helium nucleus. So when two electrons are detached from the helium atom, then the helium nucleus is left, which has a positive charge equal to the negative charge of the two electrons. So thus, the mass of the charge on the helium nucleus are equal to those of an alpha particle. So in fact, an alpha particle is a helium nucleus. 
clear so hence an alpha particle is also called doubly ionized helium atom and is represented by the 2 he4 some important properties of the alpha particles are as follow you can see here the first one alpha particles are deflected in electric and magnetic fields and the direction of the deflection indicates that they are positively charged fine now come to the second one the second one is the velocity of the alpha particle is much less than the velocity of the light which is uh, you can say that one upon one tenth part of the alpha particles emitted by different elements have somewhat different velocities but the velocity of alpha particle emitted by the same element is same so for example the velocity of alpha particle emitted by uranium is 1.4 into 10 to the power 7 meter per second and that of the particle which is emitted by thorium is 2.2 into 10 to the power 7 meter per second now due to this velocity difference there is some dispersion in alpha particle in an electric and magnetic fields now come to the third one the range of the alpha particle in the air that is the distance traveled by an alpha particle in air at ntp i hope you know what is ntp normal temperature pressure arises from the 2.7 cm for particle clear uh, from uranium to uh, 1 to 8.6 cm for particle for the thorium which is c so in general the range varies from the radioactive substances and the nature of the pressure of the medium clear now come to the fourth one alpha particles can penetrate through matters but their penetrating power is small they are stopped by only 0.1 mm thick of aluminum sheets so the penetrating power is only 1 upon 100 of the beta particles and 1 upon 10000 that of the gamma ray so you can easily say that the penetration power of the gamma rays is very much larger as compared to the beta and alpha rays now come to the fifth one alpha particle can cause intense ionization in a gas through which they can pass so the ionizing power is 100 times greater than the beta rays and 10000 times greater than the gamma rays it means that the ionizing power of alpha is uh, very much larger as compared to the beta and gamma fine now come to the sixth one alpha rays are scattered when passing through the uh, thin foil of gold or mica while most of the particle is scattered through the small angle some of them is scattered through a very large angle which is greater than 90 degree clear now come to the seventh one alpha particle produces fluorescence of a substance with zinc sulfide and the barium platinum cyanides when an alpha particle strike fluorescent screen a scintillation we count the number of alpha particle by counting the number of scintillations clear the seventh one is the because of their high emitting velocity alpha particle are used for bombarding the nuclei in the transmission of an one element into the other uh, come to the tenth one they produces heating when it stop and the last one is they causes incurable burns on human body i hope you understood now you see the properties these are the properties of alpha particle now we will discuss the properties of the beta particle so here is the property of beta particle so a beta particle has a negative charge that is equal to the charge over an electron which is the charge in electron actually beta particle are the fast moving electrons so these are not the orbital electrons of the atom but are emitted from the nucleus clear so some important properties of the beta particles are as follows the first one is beta particles are deflected by electric and magnetic fields and the direction of the deflection shows that they are negatively charged so if the deflection is much larger than the deflection of the alpha particles this shows that the beta particles are much lighter than the alpha particles now come to the second one the velocity of the beta particles varies from 1 to 99 percent of the velocity of light in velocity beta particles differ from cathode rays there is enough variation in the velocities of the beta particle that is emitted by the same radioactive substances this is why enough dispersion is found in these particles in electric and magnetic fields fine now come to the third one since the velocity of the beta particle is of the order of velocity of light so their masses increases with the increase in their velocities if the rest mass of beta particle be m naught then their state of the velocity will be and m be, uh, then according to the einstein theory of relativity we have m is equals to m naught and uh, root 1 minus v square by c square where c you know variables is the velocity of light clearly the value of v approaches the value of m go on increasing so there are other uh, important properties of the beta particles i am not discussing all of them i am just telling you uh, here you can see the most important one is the fifth and the sixth one the penetrating power of the beta particle is 100 times larger than the penetrating power of alpha that is they can pass through one mm thick sheet and uh, the sixth one is the beta particle ionizes gases but their ionizing power is much smaller than the ionizing power of alpha particles beta particle cannot produce ionization continuously their track in the cloud chamber do not appear to be a continuous fine i hope uh, i hope you understood now see the properties of gamma rays here is the property of gamma rays so like x rays they, uh, the gamma rays are electromagnetic waves 
the energy of gamma photon is very large in the order of million electron volt clear so hence the wavelength of the gamma photon of the energy 1 um, mega electron volt is equal to 10 to the power 6 electron volt and you can see here this is the wavelength of 0 0.01 angstrom which is about 1 by 100 part of the wavelength of x rays so the important properties of the gamma rays are x follows uh, you can see here these are the few properties so i am not discussing all of them i am coming to the important one which is your uh, you can say that uh, mm, the uh, eighth and the ninth one you can see here though there is a much similarity between x rays and gamma rays yet their sources of origin are different x rays are produced by the transition of electron this is the most important one in an atom from one energy level to another energy level that is it is the atomic property whereas the gamma rays are produced by the nucleus that is a nuclear property now come to the ninth one gamma rays are absorbed by substance and give rise to the phenomenon of pair of production when a gamma rays photon strike the nucleus or such some atom its energy is converted into an electron and a positron positively charged electron and its own existence is extinguished you can see here when a gamma photon is break down into an electron which is minus and when we electron considering the positive charge then it is considered as the positron clear now with the help of this table you can easily understood what is the property alpha particle beta particle and gamma rays nature their charge their rest masses their velocity their ionization power and their penetrating power so kindly uh, remember this table this is the important one clear yeah. and i am moving to the radioactivity decay law and decay constant this is the important topic which is your third one so we have read that the atoms of a radioactive element emit alpha particle or beta particle and also the gamma rays as a result both the atomic weight and the atomic number are changed so thus the original radioactive atom is decay and an atom of some new element is born this phenomena is called the radioactive decay clear so radioactive disintegration for example when an alpha particle is emitted from a uranium atom then it is converted into a thorium atom and this can be represented by this that is if a uranium is break down then it uh, gives that alpha particle that is 2he4 and a thorium atom is also formed so this shows that the emission of result in an atom whose mass number is lower by 4 and the atomic number is lower by 2 because there is an alpha particle is limited uh, emitting so you can see here 92 uranium 238 there is a change in the mass number by 4 unit and the change in the atomic number by 2 unit so that is the thing written here so if the new atom formed by alpha emission is a radioactive then it is 2 it decay and the third new atom is obtained so for example you can see here thorium is also a radioactive element so by emitting a beta particle it is conv uh, converted to a proto actinium atom you can see with uh, from the thorium atom and a beta particle is emitted and it is changes there is no change in the mass number when a beta particle is emit from a thorium atom then uh, atomic number is decreased increased by one unit and there is no change in the mass number and there is anti neutrino particle is also comes out this shows that the beta emission result in the atom whose mass number is same that's the, the parent atom but whose atomic number is higher than by one than the parent atom that is the thing given here clear now come to on this here radioactive decay is a nuclear process that is the radioactive rays are emitted from the nucleus of the atom so this process cannot be accelerated or slowed down by the any physical or chemical process this is the most important one so for example by changing temperature pressure etc or by mixing some other substances with the radioactive materials this is because the energy or chemical changes is of the order of one electron volt whereas nuclear energy is of the order of million of electron volt clear so a change of one to two electron volt of energy cannot affect the nucleus Similarly, ordinary temperature changes cannot affect the rate of decay in a radioactive material. So actually this process is a spontaneous disintegration of a nucleus. I hope you understood. Now come to the rate, uh, Rutherford and Soddy law of radioactive decay. Rutherford and Soddy made experimental study of the radioactive decay of various radioactive material and found that the decay of all radioactive material is governed by the general law. So according to this law, the rate of decay of radioactive atoms at an instant is proportional to the number of atoms present at that instant. Let's suppose uh, capital N be the number of atoms present in the radioactive substance at an instant t and dn be the number of that disintegrate in a short interval time dt and the rate of disintegration that is minus dn by dt is proportional to n. So you can write it minus dn by dt is equal to lambda times of n. Where lambda is a constant for a given substance and is called its decay constant. This is the important one. Or you can also say disintegration constant or radioactive constant. 
or also transformation constant. So for a given element, the value of lambda is constant, but for different element, it is different from the above equation. So you can write it dn over n is equal to minus lambda times of dt. Or you can take, if we take log on both the sides, then it's a, you can write it like this, log e n minus lambda t plus c. Here we have to integration, not taking the log, here we integrate the term dn by n and integrating both sides, so finally we will get this. Where c is the integration constant, to determine the c we apply the initial condition, suppose we have the n0 atom in the beginning that is n is equals to n0 at t is equals to 0, so you can easily find out the value of c. Now this value we put in the above equation and finally you can see here this is the relation between the initial number of atoms and the after disintegration n is equals to n0 e to the power minus lambda t. This thing you had already covered in the chemistry also. So here n0 and n are the number of atoms in a radioactive substance at time t is equals to 0 and after t respectively. So according to this equation the decay of a radioactive substance is an exponential find that is the decay is rapid in the beginning and then its rate decreases continuously. So it means that a radioactive substance will take infinite time in decaying completely. Now if we put t is equals to 1 by lambda, so in equation this, so what we will get here, n is equals to n0 e to the power minus 1 or you can write it n0 by e. In place of e you can write 2.718 uh, and it finally come to 0.368 n0. So thus, in a radioactive material, after an interval of equal to the reciprocal or decay constant, the undecay atoms are 36.8% of their initial number. So conversely, the radioactive decay constant may be defined as the reciprocal of the time during which the number of the atom in a radioactive substance reduces to 36.8% of their initial number. I hope you understand what I taught you. If you have still any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. So that's all for the today's lecture, student. We will meet with the next lecture, that is lecture number 2 tomorrow. Till that, do study. Thank you class.